Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm a psychology major at FAU, and my project uses deep learning to detect drug impairment. Recently, concerns about drug impaired driving have been escalating. The latest data shows that for the first time, drug use was more prevalent in fatally injured drivers than alcohol. This is in line with trends over the past decade that show that while rates of drunk driving are decreasing, drug impaired driving is actually increasing. Officials say that issues like the opioid epidemic and the legalization of marijuana in multiple states are only contributing to this trend. Ultimately, the goal is to hold these drivers accountable and to get them off the road and into treatment. But in order for any of that to happen, the drivers must be correctly identified, which can prove difficult. For one, there is no standard roadside test to detect drugs. Police typically obtain blood samples for chemical analysis at the station, but first the patrol officer at the scene has to have sufficient evidence to make the arrest. One popular but elusive solution is to create a breathalyzer for drugs, using tests like saliva swabs. But there are still some issues with the idea of using chemical tests to measure drug impairment. A positive test can't conclusively prove that the driver is currently impaired. Some drugs, like marijuana, stay in the body for weeks after use, long after impairment has disappeared. It's also difficult to establish a threshold similar to the 0.08 BAC limit, because unlike alcohol, the relation between different drugs' presence in the body, their concentration, and their impairing effects are complex and not well understood, especially since individuals differ in how their bodies absorb and metabolize drugs. And even if we had a reliable test, the officer would still need sufficient evidence of impairment to compel the sample in the first place. That brings us to the second problem. Most patrol officers are not trained to recognize the signs and symptoms of drivers impaired by drugs other than alcohol. One solution is to increase training, specifically to expand the Drug Recognition Expert Program. It trains officers to use a 90-minute behavioral evaluation to detect drug impairment and the category of drug involved and the program reports accuracy rates as high as 92%. However, less than 2% of all law enforcement officers are actually certified. There are a few concerns with expanding this program. Uh, training is expensive. It requires over 100 hours of training, which takes the officers away from their regular duties. And it might not actually be that accurate. Some independent studies estimate that experts' accuracy is closer to 70 than 92%. And even the original report shows that experts struggle with certain categories of drugs, such as stimulants like amphetamine. So to solve this problem, we need a solution that can directly measure behavioral impairment rather than relying on secondary chemical measures, as well as something more accurate than humans. Our solution, a type of artificial intelligence called deep learning. Artificial neural networks are algorithms that learn based on a set of training examples. They're modeled after networks of neurons in the human brain. So my inspiration for this project comes from a combination of my background working in the drug treatment industry and in the MPCR lab. Clinicians in the field tend to develop an intuition over time that tells them when a client is high. This comes from experience with hundreds of examples of what it looks like when someone is intoxicated. So our question was, could a neural network develop the same type of ability with sufficient training? As of now, no study has used deep learning to detect drug impairment, but a few have examined alcohol intoxication. Studies that use motion data from sensors show that the way a person walks is predictive of intoxication. Another study that used face videos shows that facial features are also predictive. However, none of these studies use very large sample sizes. Our initial preliminary study aimed to confirm that neural networks could detect alcohol intoxication using a larger sample of face videos. We created our own data set of over 120 videos of sober subjects and over 120 videos of drunk subjects. After training the network on a portion of the data, we showed it the remaining videos it had never seen before to test its validation accuracy. The model was 74% accurate in detecting alcohol intoxication. This is significant considering we only use 50 frames per subject, which is equivalent to only one second of footage. This graph shows the model's ability to distinguish between the two categories, which proves very promising. Our next step is training our model to classify drug-impaired subjects as well. The biggest challenge is finding video data of people on drugs. This is where we have a unique advantage. 
Our research team has partnered with Banyan Detox in Boca Raton, a drug detox facility with 12 nationwide locations. The facility already records clients with security cameras. With the client's permission, they will share their intake footage with us, which includes views of their full body as they walk through the door, as well as their facial features during the actual intake process. Intake sessions run up to 40 minutes long, which means we'll have access to more than 120,000 frames per client. Each subject will be linked to their self-reported use and 12-panel urine results for classification. So how do we know that this will work for drugs? The very fact that human experts have the ability to not only identify general intoxication, but also to distinguish between categories of drugs, means that there is predictive power in the behavioral data they use to make these evaluations. And this is all based on training they receive from a program designed by humans. The neural network will learn far more efficiently and effectively on its own, which means that it can use patterns that we don't necessarily consider predictive. We will also be building on our previous study by using a far greater amount of data, full body video as well as face video, and a new technique called pose estimation. Pose estimation automatically extracts skeletal points from videos or images. We start with the original image, apply pose, and then algorithmically extract the skeletal points. This way the model will be able to better measure the spatiotemporal changes between skeletal points in each frame, which has proven predictive of intoxication. At this point, the data is also completely de-identified, which is always important when using sensitive health information. Once we collect a significant amount of data, we will train the model and test its accuracy on a validation set to see how well it generalizes. We will then continue collecting data and updating the model until it reaches a high degree of accuracy. I can't stress enough that no one else has done what we are proposing to do. We are in a unique position in terms of our location and the nature of our lab. South Florida is known as the recovery capital of the world due to the number of drug treatment centers per capita. Our community and industry partners mean that we have access to extremely valuable data that others lack. Once the model reaches a high degree of accuracy, we have the potential to develop a piece of software that could completely revolutionize roadside drug testing, and it could have any number of applications beyond law enforcement and other forensic or clinical settings, any situation that requires knowledge of current intoxication. A brief timeline, we finalized our partnership with Banyan this semester and submitted our application to the IRB following discussions with its members. Once approved, we have infrastructure and protocols in place to begin data collection immediately. We will continue collecting data over the next year and begin training and testing the model in the fall. By spring 2020, we will finish evaluating our model's accuracy and, if acceptable, begin the development and potential commercialization of software. Thank you.